the key to success is developers, 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 developers. All right, so Microsoft just introduced Python inside of Excel. To learn all about it, we'll start with an overview of how to use it. Then we'll get into some data analysis in Excel using Python. Thirdly, we'll go over some of the charts and visuals available. And finally, we'll look at how to install it in your computer and some of the shortcomings of the software. So let's get into it. In this Excel file that I have open, if I head over to the formulas tab, I can find the Python area over here. And within it, I can just click on insert Python, or similarly, I can insert it as if it were a formula by typing the equal sign and typing PY. You can see here that it says creates Python formulas. We'll hit the tab key there to activate it. Now that we have Python active, we need to give it some data. And for that, we have this table over here with the share prices of some companies that maybe we want to purchase. So we'll select all of it by going to control shift down, control shift right. And from here, you can see that it's starting to fill in. And instead of hitting enter like you would in a regular formula, in this case, we need to hit control enter as enter just creates a new line. So control enter to run it. So this gives you this icon with the word data frame. And in case you're not familiar, a data frame is basically like a condensed storage for your table. So what we can do is actually click on this, which says show card, and you can see a summary of the table that it's actually pulling. Or similarly, we can click on this button right here under Python object and change to Excel value to expand that table. You can see that it's basically pulling all of the data that we asked it to. We can go back and collapse it again by hitting Python object. Now that we have this data frame, let's do some data analysis. So down over here, let's say we put equals PY again to reference Python, and we want to reference the data frame. So we'll simply select it from here. We'll put a dot. Let's say that we want to learn more about the data, see things like the averages, the maxes and mins and so on. So we can just put dot describe and then open parenthesis and close and hit control enter. And you'll see that it's still a data frame, but this time when we expand it by going up over here and hitting Excel value, you can see that it's been able to get this whole summary for us. Just a few clicks with the average, the minimums, the quartiles, and a lot of other data. Now that we have these statistics, we can go ahead and see the relationship. So is there a correlation between the trend in Apple shares and the trend in ExxonMobil shares? So for this, we can also use Python. Let's go ahead and hit equals PY again, and let's select the same data frame to reference dot. And this time we're gonna do a correlation. So just CORR, open and close a parenthesis and hit control enter. And let's go ahead and open this up as well for Excel value. And you can see the correlation between these shares. Obviously Apple to Apple has a perfect correlation of one, but if we go down, Apple and Microsoft seem to be very correlated while lower down ExxonMobil, maybe not so much. Zero would mean there's no correlation, while going all the way to minus one would mean that they're inversely correlated. Now, what if we wanna filter out some of these companies? Maybe we only wanna see the relationship between Apple and Microsoft. Well, for that, we can get inside of the code, and then I'm going to put these two parentheses twice there, and in quotations, the shares that we want. So we want Apple, close the quotations, comma, and we also want Microsoft. And then we're gonna close that again and just hit Control Enter. And you can see how that's been able to filter things. Next up, let's take a look at the chart and visual capabilities of Python in Excel. So over here under the same data set, let's suppose that we wanna try to plot a chart, a line chart for the dates and Apple share price. Well, we can do that by going to equals, let's hit PY, tab, and let's reference the data set dot and we're gonna put plot here as we want to plot a chart and within it in parentheses we need to specify what we want as the x-axis so we'll put an x equals and in quotations that's gonna be the date for us and comma for the y-axis equals to apple as that's the share price we're interested in we'll close the quotations close the parentheses and just hit enter there and you'll see that we get this image so let's go ahead and see it as an excel value but you'll notice that it's very, very small in here. You might not even be able to see it. So let's go ahead and make this larger. 
And I'm just gonna go over it to merge and center so we can see it there. Now you can see the share price of Apple and that trend. Now, only having Apple's share price is not very useful for comparison. So let's try add another share here. We can do that by going to the Y axis here and putting that in these uh, parentheses. So we're gonna have Apple, comma, and let's say we also wanna have Microsoft in here. Close the quotations and let's close this and hit Control Enter. Now you can see that it's added both shares for us. Another thing we could do to simplify the code a bit is go up to the very top under the data frame and you'll notice that when we've been linking it, we haven't actually labeled it anything, we've just been linking it as the cell, but we can go ahead and change that. So at the very top one, we're going to type say DF for data frame and just equal it that. That way we've basically named it. And so when we go down to the chart over here, instead of having to put this this link every time, we can just hit TF, and now it's gonna identify as the same thing. So when I hit enter, we get the same answer. Awesome, those are still some simple charts. So let's take a look at some harder ones that Excel doesn't have. For this, we can use some of the Python visual libraries like matplotlib over here, and you can scroll through all of the charts. Or similarly, we've got Seaborn over here with their example gallery. If you ever wanna select a particular one, you can just click inside of it and over here you can copy the code and then tweak it to your liking. So let's head back to Excel so I can show you an example. Over here I've already copied some data from Seaborn for a specific chart, in this case called a pair plot, which we'll see in a second. So over here is all of the syntax that I have and so it says to import Seaborn and from here we have a few of the instructions. So we're saying, hey, what's the data set that we want? Well, we want this data set over here and we do have headers as well. And then right below that over here, we're saying that we want a pair plot and we want the variables to be the four share prices that we have, which are the same as these over here. From there, we can just hit on control enter to activate it. All right, we have this image, so let's turn it to an Excel value. And from here again, we're just going to make this a bit larger by merging and centering. Awesome, and just like that, we've been able to generate this advanced Excel visual. Let me zoom in here so you can see it better. A pair plot is often used to understand relationships between variables and for summarizing a large amount of data in a single figure. Those are just some of the capabilities of Python in Excel. More powerful ones include creating your own formulas to clean up real data sets, doing some forecasting and even machine learning for predicting the weather and much more that we didn't cover in this video. So if you wanna go ahead and install it for yourself, here's the instructions. First, you need to join the Microsoft 365 Insider program. And from here, you're gonna want to change your settings over here down below under your account. Once you do that, you should change to the beta channel and then just go ahead and accept their terms. I'll link the Microsoft article below the video in case it's useful. As for when you can expect to get it, Microsoft said that it's rolling out access gradually, but for the time being, you can sign up to be notified for the availability here. One of the small shortcomings of this software is that you need internet connection for it. So if I turn off my Wi-Fi and hit enter one more time, you'll see that all of the values are now gone. That's because it needs connection to the internet as it's connected to the cloud, which might raise some privacy concerns for some of you. But if all of that is not a problem for you, then it's obviously a major upgrade. Let me know in the comments what you think of this new feature. And to take some of our Excel courses, check out this link over here, or check out some of our videos over here. And I'll catch you in the next one.